So well, it's been a busy time over the last few months. And of course, uh, back in November, December time, we were busy coming up with our tips for 2023. And there was a band that we just felt were essential that needed to be on that list. I am so happy to say that I am finally, after a few months, catching up with Luke and Ross from Chalk. How are you doing? Yeah, hey, good. So good, firstly... Good. You're on our tips list for 2023. How does it feel? Is it a valuable thing to you? Is it important? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Or you go ahead, Luke. Yeah, it's, it's super important for us. Like radio, like radio has been really, really kind of since we started. And uh, it means a lot seeing the support from amazing. We've seen, I personally run the Twitter account and I see I see that support coming through regularly from yourself, Shell. So we really appreciate that. And, and radio has been so helpful for us kind of starting out as a band and, and trying to get the music out there. So you met studying though, didn't you? Yeah, um, we all studied film at Queen's. So um, we've, we bonded over the love of film first and then the music came. Um, so it's kind of a, a cool little anecdote that we throw in to new listeners, I think. And now it makes sense. The videos that I've seen so far have been very cinematic, very striking. Are you using those skills? To help you in other parts of your music journey as well then yeah uh, ben who's not here at the moment he directs all the videos and stuff so um he would be good to speak more on it but even for like the ep that's coming out like we're going to be making like a special short film uh as well so that's going to play into like the whole live experience so it's an it's it's an essential part i yeah. think this sort of makes it a bit more exciting for us and hopefully the crowd when they come to see us so what kind of artists did you kind of bond over in the first few months then? Well, like we have, we always tell the story. Um, when, when I first met Ben, our guitar player, that's the first person I encountered on the course. And we didn't really know Ross at the time. Um, but through Ben's partner, we actually found out that Ross had a, a Gilla band poster in his room. Um, and I think we knew pretty immediately like, okay, let's, let's talk to this guy. We knew he played a bit of guitar so Gillaband was, was, of course, like most Irish bands, especially young bands. Gillaband's always a big influence, but um, we touched on Proto Martyr, bands like Mets and Preoccupations. These were bands that we were talking about as well, um, very early days, and Parquet Courts as well. Um, Ross introduced me to. Um, I don't know if there's any others, Ross, that you can think of, top of your head. Oh, I think you've nailed it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. so. So yes, definitely so. a lot of those kind of industrial as well as like post-punk sounds in there. Um, mm -hmm. Just the intensity, isn't it? It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, even like bands like Death Grips and I can't say their full band name, but Holy F, maybe you know them, the instrumental band. They were um, definitely like last year um, when we were um, talking about like with our producer Chris Ryan, some um artists that we were looking at for like some sort of references and things, just to sort of whilst we were trying to find um our sound and sort of begin that relationship with our producer, then two bands came up quite a bit as well. So um yeah, it's just a, a whole lot of everything, not really necessarily yeah. focused on that sort of um I guess post punk alternative rock um side yeah. as well. It's developed like the more that we've um, kind of experimented musically and, and spoken about things behind the scenes, the, mu the music we listen to is just really developed. And like Ross said, it's gone into the bands like Holy F. Um, we've talked about, you know, Nine Inch Nails a lot, but also just getting into like techno music and, and dance music. There's, there's a lot of artists that we love. I know Ross loves Tirza. Um, it's an amazing artist. And so we've just tried to expand that as we've discovered our sound and we finally have settled on something with this EP coming that, feels coherent and feels like us um, but it's a real mix of all of that yeah I could definitely hear a few scalping vibes like the more industrial side of yeah. it been through on the last couple of singles as well which is mm -hmm. kind of fresh and raw you know we've had obviously a lot of music from the likes of Murder Capital and Fontaine's DC but the industrial side just kind of takes it up that little bit more doesn't it? it's like that kind of dance techno crossover with post-punk mm. which it's just like you want to get people like really moving in the mosh and I can see that would really do it I mean we were all pouring over a live set that you had and I think it was Ulster um is that what your live shows have been like so far yeah I mean, we've only played a couple actually as Chalk you know we've played a couple of gigs prior in a different project but as Chalk it's been the two we supported PVA 
who we're big fans of in Dublin. And then we played our headline in Belfast in, at the start of November, I believe. Um, and that show was amazing. Yeah, there's a video up online of that. It's kind of the one video you can find live footage of us. Um, and it's it's funny because it was uploaded, you know, in pretty low quality. It's quite grimy. And I think it actually helps get the vibe across. Um, but that was when we played Velodrome live in Ulster Sports Club. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a very intense atmosphere, like such a great song as well. I mean, we've had like, what, four tunes out there so far. Have you been really bowled over about the response that you've had so far, so quickly? Yeah, um, it's it, especially locally. Um, it's great because Belfast, like the scene here is um, like, I, I'm not from here, Luke's from here. But like whenever we were at university, like seeing some of the bands come out, like Ruba Kuba Quartet, Junk Jaw, uh, Careerist, like that was um, inspiring. But just locally, it's been great with the reaction to like the debut track um, and the support that we've got. And it just sort of really propelled us to really give it a, a proper go. And uh, if Ben was here, he would say we were perfectionists because he said it um, last week. We are. Um, we just want things to be, um, I think, yeah, we just have an idea of how we want things to sound and look on stage and everything. Um, and I think we're just going with our gut. And so far, um, we're enjoying the journey. And that's sort of the advice that um, people have been sending us, especially before tour in May. We just can't wait to get out there and experience it all. What's the live setup looking like ready for tour then? Have you got it all nailed down or is it still a work in progress? It's, it's yeah, always it's a work in progress. <laughs> it's always shifting. <laughs> um but we're rehearsing soon uh, we have been but we will be just finalizing every little thing but um yeah with the three of us we've made it work so far so um yeah, yeah it works yeah. It. i think three um, lends itself well so like visually on stage you know we traditionally you'd see the drums kind of for me personally as the drummer traditionally you see the drums kind of back and center whereas i'd play the kind of left of stage you know stage left and um it just visually you can do quite a lot with the three and you know, we always like that idea so there's so much that we think about that goes into it beyond just the music it's the projected visuals on us you touched on scalping earlier that they do something kind of similar um that's something that we work on and yeah it's a, it's a lot it's a lot of prep but um it's certainly it, it paid off in belfast we hope it pays off on the tour as well so you're going to be taking visuals out on the tour as well then not making it easy for yourselves no. Um, <laughs> no but there's so much to do. well i think yeah. we'll uh, all part of the fun um we'll get there so i look at the artwork for every single single and obviously that aesthetic that you've had in the videos is kind of carried through in the artwork as well isn't it? it's all monochrome very intense striking images um who who's the the master mastermind behind uh, most of the artwork it's ross ross does for, i think his touches on every single piece of artwork that we've put out so far on, on the music. Um, because Ross shoots the videos, like our artwork for them was a still from them, from the music video. That was Ross who shot that. And then Ross worked kind of with digital art to create some of the more recent ones. Um, that's all him, so. Amazing. And the literally the new single we had, what, a week ago asking, what can you tell us about it? It's um, one of our favorites, definitely. Like early on, um, we knew, we brought it to producer Chris, he was loving it. So we knew it was a special song from the start. But I think we um, we all sort of came together to write the lyrics to that. And it sort of just wanted to explore this idea of the past in a way and um, sort of letting go of someone or maybe just trying to remember memories. It's sort of like the broad thing, but it's whatever it's up to. However, I guess we want people to perceive it in a way. Yeah. But that's just what it means um, generally to me, at least. Um, but um, yeah, it came about quite quickly that song um just in the room last year so um me and luke were working tirelessly on that rhythm <laughs> just trying to get it right i think about four or five variations of it but um we landed on something at the start with the yeah. drumstick yeah i mean we'll touch on this more with the ep but the ep being call conditions obviously we'll go into that asking just felt like one of those components of life the ep is kind of diving into different components that we all go through and asking was really about you know people you meet, people you might leave behind, the good elements of that, sometimes the destructive elements of that. Um, like Ross said, it's really how you view these kind of themes, really, when you hear them, but it felt quite personal in that way. Um, and yeah, Ross and I, that one came about pretty quickly, but we did get quite fidgety with it, trying to make sure everything was perfect. Um, and like Ross said, when we when we showed Chris the track, 
Um, I think we knew it was it was definitely one to save for towards the end of the releases, you know. And yeah, it's been received really well so far, and by yourself as well, Shell. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. I absolutely love him playing it. Every time I get to play it, it's a complete buzz. Um, I mean, you mentioned there the EP, which I'm really psyched about. What can you tell us about conditions? Yeah, I suppose I touched on it there. It feels like kind of everything that we've been brainstorming and working on in the past, I'd say, two years. Um, it's something that during lockdown, I'm sure a lot of bands have talked about this with yourself, but we started writing this in lockdown and we had a lot of time just to sit and, and work on new material. We changed our sound a million times, really, but we finally settled on something that felt like like us. And this EP is not just musically us, but I think thematically it's everything we've been through, everything a lot of people have been through in the past few years. Um, and we, we just cannot wait to share it, um, particularly this title track as well coming out, you know, on the 5th of May. Um, there's a lot in there um, that we can't wait for people to uncover, yeah. It feels, just because it's an EP, it, it really is such a big part of our lives the last couple of years, and it does kind of feel like a mini uh, like album in a way, just the way I think we decided to approach it, and with the short film, so it's such, um, it's such, it's going to be such, it's just been such a big part of our lives, these songs, we've carried them for so long, so whenever we move on to the next project, it'll just be sort of strange, um, moving on to new material, but they're all. I think all songs will just have like a, a special place, um, always with us, just uh, because they were the first set of, the first set of material I think we released. So um, maybe that maybe every musician feels that way when they release their first little uh, set of tunes. But um, yeah, I think uh, it's really special to us, and we're excited to get it out. Mm -hmm. You touched upon the Belfast scene there. What's going on there at the moment? Is there a lot of support, a lot of great spaces, a lot of bands around, a lot of artists? Yeah, um, I would be, um, I'd run nights myself and just put shows on. So we would try to bring up bands even from down south as well. But Belfast has always been like a sort of, had a rich history of um, great music. And I think um, I touched on Robocoba Quartet, uh, Junk Chore. There's a band called Jock who are um, on their way in. Um, we share a rehearsal space with them, a rapper uh, called Yin Yang, Lauren who played with us in um, the Ulster Sports Club. So there's so much coming out and even like newer bands, like younger uh, younger people are just coming up. And um, it's, it's exciting to watch because um, I think there's always been um, potential here for it just to get greater and greater. And it just feels like it is. So it is, um, it is nice to be a part of, especially I'm not from Belfast, so Luke is from here. So I sort of stepped into it all. I don't know what you think, Luke. Uh, yeah, I mean, loads of loads of dance music culture here and techno. Like, there's obviously AVA festivals, one of the biggest kind of dance festivals, and and so naturally, I suppose we draw some of that influence in from that. But like, my experience is maybe different. Yeah, my dad's a musician here, so he's a he's a jazz musician. So I've kind of grown up going to his gigs. Um, but I suppose the scene for that's not massive in Belfast, just with it being such a small city. So there are little kind of subcurrents and. Um, I suppose groups of of different musicians around the place, but it's such a small city. It's like you just know everyone, you know, um, and we've come to know basically everyone now just from getting started. Um, you meet all the journalists and all the people involved in bands um, pretty quickly. So, um, no, we're all very proud of our our own artists here, you know. I'm guessing this feels like it's tangibly been there for some time. Are you working on new material already? Oh yeah, always uh, the right the pen is always. Uh... <laughs> doing work so we're just trying to figure out um i think we're just trying to sort of bring some ideas together and sort of format it in a way who knows um we're going to talk and figure out when we can release some stuff there might be some surprises over summer or maybe later in the year but we're just um we're i think we're in the studio in a couple of months again so um yeah we're keen to just keep the, the ball rolling uh with releases You've mentioned yeah, a producer yeah. that you've been working with. So are you aiming to continue that relationship? And is that based in the studio that you just mentioned? Yeah. yeah. Um, Chris is the, Chris Ryan. So he's the drummer and singer of Robocobra Quartet as well. So he's, you know, he's um, fantastic to work with. And I think from whenever we did the debut single, um, we just all struck it off. So absolutely. Um, we'll be working with Chris again. And he's um, really inspired and motivated us to sort of look at, um, recording and producing in different ways so um 
it's every time we're all in the room together it's it's a great time and we're um really happy with um how things have went from so far yeah he feels like a, a fourth member sometimes honestly because he, it's such a it's a friendship that we've built with him not just a, a working relationship and we kind of knew of him from working on the just mustard uh music and and new dad bands like that so we just kind of immediately thought let's go for this guy and it's turned out to be one of the one of the best decisions we've made in the past couple of years and we certainly look into to strengthen that relationship and keep that going.